I suppose for me personally, I sort of feel like that if it comes back that you let people down. Um, I suppose, you know, I think about the kids and, and my wife and stuff like that and, and just, yeah, sort of think that if it comes back that, that um, I feel like I've failed them in some way or I've done something wrong or something like that. Um, so I guess it just, yeah, it just sort of makes me think about how they'll react and that kind of thing. Yeah, so we're doing the PET scan for you today. Yeah. So what we're going to be doing, we'll pop a cannula in your arm, yeah. then going to take you into one of our side rooms, going to be giving you an injection. The injection is radioactive, but there's no side effects or anything like that. Yeah. After the injection, we do just have to wait about an hour. It just takes a little while for it to circulate around the system. Then we can take you through for the scan. Yeah. The scan itself takes about 15, 20 minutes. Yeah, okay. All right. yeah. So the injection we give, it's basically a radioactive sugar. Do you know? Um, do you know why it has to be radioactive? Uh, so it's basically just how we're looking at the metabolism of the cells. So it works a bit differently yeah, to okay. your normal CTs and stuff. It's basically a reverse X-ray in a way. So yeah. it's coming out of your system, so we're able to yeah see how all the cells are functioning. Yeah, so okay. things like the cancer cells use a bit more sugar. So that's why we can sort of see how that's all functioning, sort of assess spread or surveillance yeah, of cool. cancer. Yeah. Just gonna test inject some saline to start with. Matt's all feeling okay there? Yeah. Yep, cool. So we'll come back in about an hour. So just yep. sitting and relaxing in the meantime. Yeah. You can use the toilet as well if you need to. Alright. You can feel it, it goes like right up under your armpit, eh? Feel it feels weird. So basically from, from here we um, get a phone call from the doctor in a couple of weeks and yeah, we, we basically just uh, have a catch up with him. Um, he says how the results were, depending on what he says is kind of what happens next. I think you will forget about the day to day process of having the treatment and um, you know, the hours spent, the head over the toilet bowl and stuff like that. I think you'll forget about that. But I think you'll never forget about, you know, having the operation and having all those scans and having all the treatment and that kind of thing. I don't think you'll ever get over that. My guests today are two Margaret River locals who've set themselves an incredible challenge, being the first people to run the Gibb River Road in the Kimberley. The Gibb is a 660 kilometre track that's only four wheel drive accessible and comes with challenges and risks if you're driving it, let alone running it. Katie Lovis and Jared Bolton, welcome to the studio. Hi, thanks, thanks for having, for having us, us. Now, how long will it take you to, to run the 660 kilometres? Jared makes side eyes at me again. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, <clears throat> I have figured out how to answer this now because I get asked it all the time yeah. and I know that Jared makes side eyes at me every time. <laughs> in a perfect world of, in which we do not live but you never know... Um, my dream of dreams, <laughs> which <laughs> Jared doesn't like. <laughs> Put it this way, it's basically started at around about four weeks. It never and started it, and at And then it went to about three weeks. weeks. It never And did. then it went to about two weeks. <laughs> it did. And I think it's down to about less than one week I now. Want, I want to run 100 kilometres a day. I've always wanted to do that. I've just slowly <laughs> been grinding away at Jared. Like, uh, we so can what's do the it. Goal? What's the goal? Jared, what's your goal? <laughs> Uh, if it was up to me, I'd probably go back to the month. <laughs> but um, unfortunately, it's not up to me. Um, no, look, we're, it, we'll aim for around six to ten days. Yeah. Um, so like Katie said, around 100 k's a day. Um, we plan on running roughly El Questro to Cunanara's the last day. Um, and if we can pull that off, then, yeah, it'll be closer to that six-day mark. 
Katie and Jared, thank you so much for joining me and sharing your story. You're both very inspirational and I wish you all the best. I don't have a lot of social media. And after, I think it was the ABC Kimberley put up a story and Jared has Facebook and he was reading the comments and screenshotting them to me and and I basically had to say stop, like stop reading them, don't send them to me because I find that side of things really hard um, because people do often go negative and I don't think that there's anything negative to what we're trying to do. It's so easy to get caught into that spiral. Like, for example, a few people were like, oh, as if they're the first people to run it. Like, and we're just going off what Main Roads told us that they don't know of anyone that's run it before. I haven't heard of anyone running it before. I did used to live up there. But if someone else has done it, then that's wonderful. Like, congratulations to that person. And if they want to reach out to us, then epic. Like, if we weren't doing the fundraising, I wouldn't even tell anyone I was going to do this. I'd just drive to Broome and give it a crack, you know, but but we want to do something that's greater than the two of us as individuals, so we need the the coverage. I find it hard. I think that's the only way I can answer it, but I'm I'm doing my best. Yeah. <laughs> Hi everyone. Um, thanks so much for coming today. We both really, really appreciate all of your support. It's been yeah, I think it's blown us both away. Um, we sort of have had all of you in our corner for some time now, but to see you all here is really special. We'd also really like to thank all of our sponsors who have donated such amazing prizes today, and that's all going to help us get across the gib. Um, and last of all, thank you all to you for coming and for backing us and for always being supportive and for being our community. Um, we feel pretty lucky to live somewhere so small with so many amazing runners and really kind people. So thank you all very much. Uh, <laughs> um, How many people do you reckon came in the end? Well, we had almost 100 tickets just from the online sales and then yep. there was probably 10 or 15 that wanted to buy at the door. Um, yep. So we definitely had over 100 just so in this space. So that's 100, what, $25 a pop, so 1250 bucks. Let's We're say at two and a half grand. Let's say eight hundred for the hats, so it's like two grand, and then whatever in raffle sales. So I reckon we. I reckon we'll be four, four to five. Four to five grand. Yeah, made. It's not bad. Yeah, that's good. Mm. That's good. And then obviously, like a lot of people would probably put into the actual. Oh, a bunch of people uh, have messaged me. Well. Couldn't come. Asked yeah. for the for the donation link, so they've donated. I think I might. Uh, I might end up. In the anyway. road. Yeah. yeah. Nah. I'm keen. Quarter to seven. Yeah. Uh, cool. the quarter to seven. It's bedtime. <laughs> Wait, I need a snooze. Yeah. I'm going to find out right tomorrow. I need to yeah, go and have some more true. pizza. Yeah, you do. <laughs> We'll be running next to each other. Um, there's definitely a bit of, like, there always has to be flexibility, fluidity with what you're doing in something like this, but we are a team. I think um, knowing my capabilities, I can probably set off a bit too fast and then have to sort of be reined back and that could sort of cause some dramas further on in the run. Katie has a lot of experience with um, long distance runs, but you know, this is something that's new to her as well as new to me. Um, so we sort of have to learn together along the way. And look, we're both gonna have different ideas about how to tackle it. So, you know, it's gonna be one of those ones about how we sort of just work together and, and get through to the end. I certainly wanna go big. Um, and I know that that scares Jared a little bit more maybe because he doesn't do as much of the ultra trail stuff. But the, the problem with running is that you're going to feel bad and then you become good and then you're going to feel bad and you get good again. So we're going to have plenty of ups and downs, that's for sure. Um, so, you know, if we're out on the road for, say, 12 hours every day and that would sort of allow if someone is struggling and there needs to be more walking, then that's a good way to still make sure that we're moving and that both of us are getting what we want out of it. I like to think that I have a pretty high pain threshold, um, but it was a 10. It was a 10 out of 10. Uh, I went to put weight down and it was that take your breath away sharp, what, what is going to happen here? Like it felt like, you know, my knee was 
bro broken, really. Um, and that pain persisted in that sort of eight to nine region for the whole week. And I try, I just, again, stubborn me, just kept going, well, maybe just try and take a running step, just see what happens and, or just, yeah, it was, it was so bad that I could not run. I just could not at all, no matter how much I tried to, um, to just do it, like nut through it, I couldn't do it. Um, so your ITB is the quite firm band that runs down the lateral side of your leg um, and it comes down to your knee, inserts at the knee. So I was getting pain all on this outside edge and through the front there and that's the patella tendon, um, which does come into play with it. That was probably my first concern. Um, but yeah, it's been pretty well confirmed that it's all through the ITB, so just on this outside edge. Um, but then when I was starting to run, I was getting a lot of seizing through my quad, um, the adductors, the ITB, so kind of the whole area was getting really tight. Um, but it was an interesting injury because it started really up in my glute area, like my glute med, and through my hip. Um, but now it's really quite specific to, to the knee joint, which I'd never had before. Um, but I guess it's quite an interesting lesson because people always think, if you run, you have bad knees, but the knee itself is actually really healthy. Um, that's what my physio said anyway. The knee feels really good. It's, it's all coming from that ITB, so that's why that outside edge was causing me so much grief, I suppose. I am a big believer that you can manifest injuries, so if you put too much thought into them, if you get too panicked by them. That first week I allowed it because it was really painful and it was unusual pain, um, but yeah, I think if you spend too much time going, this is bad, this is so bad, this isn't going to get better, um, then that will be the reality of what happens. So no, I believe that I'll get this completely under control by my... Hey Steve, how are hey. you going? Hey, it's like really excellent. It's really, really nice to hear from someone that has run it before. And I think you're, I mean, you're pretty much, to our knowledge, the only person <laughs> that will know what we're, what we're yeah. doing. So, um... I'm not looking at anybody else uh, who's, who's done it. I've got nothing digital. And, and so it was interesting just in that itself because, um, you know, if it's, not on the, if it's not on the internet, it didn't happen. <laughs> Well, the main road said to us, we believe you're the first, which is why we thought we were, because we, we knew you had to ask main roads to go and do it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, as you're the only person that's sort of come our way, so. I've been practicing on, on, a, on a, lot of, a lot of gravel, a lot of, a lot of trials. I'm never on bitumen, ever. <laughs> and I know, Jared, you said you've been doing a bit when you're up, uh, up on site as well. Getting, getting out doing a bit of gravel stuff. Yeah, yeah, I've, I've done a fair bit, but it's mostly just too hot. But yeah, and then, you know, like last couple of swings, we've been, you know, mid 50s to early 60s in temperature, and it's just too hot to run. It's just, you, you just never recover. Yeah, you can't recover from that kind of temperature, you know, like, but yeah, I, I just, I'm running, you know, 70 to 80 k's a week, but probably, you know, 40 to 50 of that a week's on a treadmill, which isn't ideal, but it's better than nothing. And, and what sort of k's are you, you said you're doing 70 or 80 k's a week in UK? I'm at about 160, so I'm 150. Last week was 140, this week will be 140, next week's 160. Um, yeah. But I haven't been below 120 since January. I don't think you're going to have any trouble, but I mean, I'd recommend Jared you get your case up, mate. Yeah, I just wish I had time. <laughs> I just struggle yeah. with time. But it's just a whole different, you know, whole different head game mm. when you're packing up days mm. like that, one after the other, after the other. And mm. well done. I mean, I'm, my hat's off to you guys. I think it's, as I said in my email, so courageous. And I mean, just keep going. You know, it's 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 mental. Just keep doing it. Thanks, uh, Steve. All Thanks. right, well, have Thanks, a great mate. day. Take care. Thanks, Jared. Thanks, Cody. Yeah. Very good. Yeah. Uh, tell me about your tattoo, because I've seen you got that. <laughs> First one or second one? Fourth one. Fourth one. Fourth yeah. one. Well, good. like, good one. Yeah. I hide the other two are on my feet, though. Yeah, yeah. Um, I got the actual elevation profile from when I, and we up to about there, 
ran the Cape to Cape. So I downloaded the map off my watch and took it in. One of the girls from the Tassie session said she was going to get one. I already knew this was what I wanted, so I said, I'll come with you. Mm. So that's the elevation profile from when I did the FKT. Yeah. And I love it. And you and I did that bit together. So we probably knew each other, what, like a year and a half by that stage? Yeah. Yeah, maybe a little bit longer. Yeah. Yeah, probably, because it was like COVID times was when we met and ran. started running random yeah. trails together. So. And because I was home more too then, mm. so. Um, did you get your results from your test the other week? Yeah, I did. Um, okay. Yeah, it was, it was mostly good. Um, so he was saying I've got uh, some more degeneration um, in my like muscles and that, which I can kind of feel more and more. Um, did they say that that was a common side yeah, effect? Yeah, it's a common side effect, yeah, okay. yeah. What else did he say? He said he had a little spot um, in my kidneys, but I'm not sure. He thought I might have been sick at the time, which I don't remember being sick. Um, so he's just going to monitor that with some blood tests and stuff like that. So When do you have to go back again? Uh, next one would be June or July, so about, so about when run. we get back, yeah. Cool. Yeah, so. That'd be interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, get back, go straight to the doctors and then keep coming home. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the Prime Minister flew to Western Australia's flood disaster and then got a close-up view of its destructive power the devastation left behind. There's obviously major uh, damage to infrastructure, including here with access to and from the town. Regarded as the state's worst flooding, a one in 100 year event, rainfall totals reaching half a metre. The Fitzroy River expanding to 50 kilometres in some areas, a community cut from the rest of the state, bridges destroyed by flooding. My first thought is just concern for the people that are up there at the end of the day, we're doing a run and as much as I'm excited about it and it means something really big to me, um, it's not as important as our environment or people's safety and their welfare. So it's something that we have to acknowledge and keep in the back of our mind as far as when we want to go up there, if the roads will be accessible. Um, but really, I just hope that everyone's OK. And, and also it caught, gives me pause for thought about bigger problems like our climate. Unfortunately, this is the world we're living in at the moment and it's getting, they keep using the term like 100 year flood, but it's happening every year. So how is it a 100 year flood? Like our climate is changing uh, and, and we're part of that. And that's something that does, that weighs on my mind. It could impact it depending on how well they're able to repair the damage. We may have to adjust. If the road isn't open, we just can't drive through it. And that's, that's, just how that has to be. Everything has the potential to push back the date of the run. Uh, hopefully not, but it could.